right, I'll just mute everyone and, and just get started, I guess, um, with everything. Cool. All right, so uh, I'll just open this up. So this is the geometry. Um, so obviously this is, you know, I've created this in, in space claim, um, but you can create the geometry in whatever you want. And the whole benefit to using this wrapping process is you don't have to, it's a little bit more forgiving, number one, on the meshing side of things. Um, there's a journal file that's scriptable and it also doesn't require you to make things like um, um, enclosures. So I found that people just had issues with that. So this is just the geometry though. So you can see we've just got a front wing. So it's important though that you call it the correct name because the name selections will come through. So front wing will come through uh, the front wheel you know, the wheel left and right. Um, it's important that you still got good kind of, you know, practices. So we've got the gap between there, we've got a, you know, a, a three or four mil gap around there and around these wings. So if I take a section around these wings, you can see even the, the main profile just has the chamfer, which is used in order to get a better, um, better boundary around there. And if we move this around as well, um, we can see that the wheels actually have a radius around here. So it's to make sure that we don't have any uh, sharp elements or anything like that. So there's a, just basic things and just making, checking for things like interference as well. Um, these are all things that you can do, right? Pretty easy. Um, on the scripting side of things, so I'll, I'll maybe go through this later on. Uh, this might be something to do a little bit later um, after we've kind of gone through the process, but this is a script and I'll give this to you guys and you can have a look at it. But, you know, it defines a bunch of things. Again, goes through the wrapping process. This is where the domain is created um, and the body of influence. Change a couple of name selections. We set up our sizings and kind of just goes through the process of setting up the mesh. And we've got a second component, which is then setting up the uh, the solving side of things as well. But we'll be going through it manually in this particular case. Um, so this is just the Fluent Launcher. Look, in your particular case, uh, double precision, and we're gonna be going into meshing mode. In the latest versions of ANSYS, uh, there's actual parallel meshing, but in 19.2, which is what I'm gonna be opening this up in, um, it's just single core meshing. But we'll leave it at four at the moment, and just make sure you put the working directory in here. So copy and paste that folder structure into there. Uh, it's gonna make sure any components that are saved and closed out uh, is gonna be kind of in this folder. So it makes it easier when it comes to actually managing your, your files as well. Right, so if you guys again have any questions, just shout out and we'll just go through them, I guess. Cool, so one of the things that we wanna do is just gonna to start to import um, our CAD. So you can see as soon as I've opened that up, it actually automatically uh, opens it up in the working directory. So I'm just gonna hit okay. I normally like to import everything in as millimeters. So it means my, um, my name selections all come through as millimeters as well. All my, sorry, sizings come through as millimeters as well. That's just a personal thing. You guys can kind of do your own thing. Um, bring it as meters if you wanted to, yeah. So again, I'm bringing in a space claim document here, but we can uh, we can bring in um, uh, we can bring in like you know SolidWorks and Inventor files or Steph files if we wanted to as well. Cool. So files come in again. Just right click on this. We can draw all. We can see what we've got here. We've got our displays. It's come through as faceted information. So it's just you know it's like an STL almost. Um, and we'll just kind of go through the process. So one of the first things that we'll do is most likely just create our construction geometry. So this is gonna be creating our um, domain, right? So we'll make it relative to these components. Um, so delta X minimum is, is so delta X is, sorry, the X, you can see the triad on the bottom right, and the minimum is almost like the negative. So if I make this say um, 2000, right? I should be able to draw it. And we can see the the minimum's kind of gone back like 2,000. So if I make this say 4,000, sorry, other way around. We'll delete that and there you go. So the minimum, sorry, goes back the other way. So I'll make this 2,000 here. Um, I'll make the delta X maximum um, around 2,000 as well. So draw it. So it's probably needs to be around maybe around six. Um, the delta Y minimum, I'm going to leave this as zero and this maximum two grand and it's going to be probably around two meters out either side, right? So that's the domain that's going to be created. 
And the other thing is that the reason I've left the um, delta y is zero is that you can see the, the bottom is just going to be exactly where the wheel will be there as well. And this edge length, I'm just going to make this edge length around 1,000. Um, it just doesn't put as many elements in there pretty much. So we're going to create the object, hit create, and it's going to call it domain, press OK. So it's going to create my domain for me in all these different names. Um, and the other thing I'd actually like to do as well is also create a uh, body of influence. So I'm just going to make that, say, put it 200 in front here, um, maybe make it 1,000 behind, um, just make it 200 above, 200, 200. Right, so I've just got this, that's going to be my body of influence. So again, create that, BOI, hit OK. Oh, let's change the edge length there to 100. Cool, I can go right click, draw all, we can see what we're drawing. So we've got our domain, we've got our body of influence, let's get rid of that highlighting, and we've got our wings as well. Next thing that we're going to do is start to create our sizing functions. Um, so this is going to be like the name selection, so saying, telling it how big the actual uh, elements need to be. So uh, I'm going to go for a minimum of one, let's go for a maximum of 200. The first one I'm going to do is just a curvature, and it's going to be around the, um, it's going to go face zones and just select the um, front wing, All right? So actually, I can, I can just leave it as object face and edges. Um, I'm select all front wing. I can draw it if I want to, just double check. Hit all faces if I want to, yeah. Press OK, and I'm just going to go from like one to 20 mil. Hit create. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is give it a proximity. Um, so it's going to put three, you know, I'm going to, I want to enforce say three elements across, uh, across these edges, which is really important when it comes to creating um, good quality meshes around here. So I'm just going to go one to five, three elements do exactly the same. And I can make a, another one as well um, for the wheel. Right, so let's just call this 20 as well. That one, that one for both of them. Right, okay, create. And I'm gonna create another one for the body of influence. Let's just go BOI. Right, um, in this particular case, I'll probably make it, because um, we're gonna be meshing it with hex core, um, there's kind of like an octree kind of method to go about it. Um, I'll talk to you guys about that later on, but uh, we'll just make it around 10 mil. Um, just like the BOI and hit create and we'll just hit compute. So those are all my sizing functions um, and it's just going to compute the, the size field pretty much. Right. So it's done that relatively quickly. One of the other things that I'd like to do is so just get draw all on this or faces um, is that we need to actually tell the software where the air domain is. So I'm going to right click on model material points and it creates a new one Let's just call it fluid all right so this is just again xyz coordinate so um, it's just going to be zero in the x it's going to be in the fluid domain so let's just give it like a thousand here a thousand here that's exactly where it is all right um so just hit create cool so now that that's done most of our actual processes are done um what we're going to do is create the surface mesh so uh, just under the wrap, we're just going to extract the features first. So this is, you can see there's not a huge amount happening, but if you started to create a huge amount of components, um, we'll start to extract, extract more features. We'll start to wrap the intersecting loop. So it's going to figure out where, for instance, the wheel and the domains are actually uh, intersecting. It's going to create a edge around there and it's going to ensure that it actually gets, um, gets meshed appropriately. Right. So let's do its thing. Yep. Um, and then the next thing that it's going to need to do is just shrink wrap it, right? So we're just going to be using the wrapping tool collectively. Uh, so we're going to wrap everything together. We're just going to call it fluid, use the fluid material point, and we're going to use a resolution factor of 0 0.7 in this particular case. I'll just hit the help button. But while that's going, I'm just going to press OK. And it'll, it'll go through the process of creating a surface mesh. So if you have, if you do have any issues about what we're actually doing, uh, there's always like a help button in any of these, um, these processes. So you can have a look at, you know, the shrimp cracking objects. You can understand what the difference is between creating it collectively um, or individually is, or collectively here. 
right? Um, we can extract the fluid volume and even things like the resolution factor. So you can see here it's telling you um, that it's sampling the uh, surface mesh. So you can make it either finer or coarser. And there are some tips and tricks here saying it's recommended to be, you know, smaller uh, around the 0.7 mark. Right. Um, and at the bottom here, there are also some commands to, to help you through that process. So if you wanted to, again, script this whole thing, you can check these ones out here. Um, I'll show you as well. So on the script, so what we're talking about, again, is pretty much being recorded on the script as well. So these are just definition files. So we're defining certain uh, definitions for name selections for sorry, so, um, some parameters. So this one's called face max and it's a 20 sizing. Um, but we can see in this particular case, we're just importing the CAD. We've created our domains um, and you can kind of see what it's doing as well. So we're in the boundary, we're creating a bounding box uh, on everything. It's a wall, it's called domain. It's got minimum and maximum. So it's X, Y, Z, and then um, X, Y, Z, min, max, and um, yeah, min and max, and also edge length as well. So again, you've got the domain here. Uh, in this particular case, I automatically changed the names from um, from them to you know to so the domain x min became the velocity inlet. Um, there are some functions in here to automatically rotate the object. So what I was talking to you guys about, we're not just uh, analyzing the car in one direction. We can also start to rotate it. Um, you know we can start to yaw it, sorry, pitch it and roll it as well. So we can have multiple kind of components put inside here. We're automatically defining the size functions the um, the scoping so the curvature proximity the body of influence we've computed it created our material point here again extracting the edges intersection loops and then we're wrapping it as well we're writing the meshing out for debugging in this particular case as well if we need to do that right, while that's doing it i guess i'll go over kind of what the the rest of the um the journal does so um there are these diagnostics in order to improve the quality so the quality gets improved here, so we can use the generally improve, and we can start to collapse objects if we wanted to as well. So this improves the surface mesh, all these functions, which is a lot easier to do it that way. We then start to tell the solver uh, what's a fluid and what's a solid. Um, so we're just saying, you know, these are the fluid regions. Uh, in this particular case, we're scoping prisms as well. So prisms are these inflation elements, which are used to accurately capture the boundary layer. We're then again meshing in polyhex core. Uh, we're changing the types as well. So the um, pressure outlet, like these name selections, um, are normally just walls. So we're actually changing them to outlets and inlets. Um, these are node movements. So we're automatically moving components of the, the mesh in order to improve the quality again. We're just checking out the, the mesh quality, writing it, scaling it down from um, millimeters to meters. And well, yeah, scaling it down, yep. Yeah and then getting rid of all the junk pretty much and switching to the solver as well, all right? Um, have you guys had a chance, oh, I'm sorry. Um, I'll show you guys what the mesh looks like in this particular case. So this is the mesh. We can start to add our clipping planes just to look at kind of what's happening. And then we can start to zoom in. So you can see this created a bit too much of a fine mesh around the end plate. So we will probably go back and might change how that's actually built. Um, you can see we've kind of got elements, three elements kind of around the back here as well. And uh, we've got a pretty fine mesh to be honest, which is probably why it took so long. Um, so again, if we right click on this, diagnostics, connectivity and quality, um, we can right click and hit summary and we can, we can see, you know, we've actually got a skewness of around 0.5, so that's really good. There's not a huge amount that needs to get done here. But if I did have something that was really bad, I can go to this quality tab, uh, skewness of 0.5, and if I hit this button first, it'll actually start to show me where these bad quality elements are, right? Um, and what you can do is using like the general improve, you can use the apply all, and it will try to move these components around in order to actually improve the quality. Right. So again, in this particular case, not really a big issue, but uh, when we've got more complicated CAD, it might be the case. Right. So after that's done, just going to right click and compute the volumetric regions using the material point. And it's going to end, we're just going to go in and tell the solver that we've got a fluid over here, which is um, what we're drawing at the moment. And there's also a front wing, but we don't need that for this analysis. 
the internal geometry at least, so we're gonna give it a dead zone. So we're just gonna call it dead. And now that that's done, we can actually start to create our mesh. So we're just auto meshing. We've got prisms that we wanna grow, right? So in this particular case, uh, I'm just gonna put them on the wing. Um, I'll normally do like a last ratio, give it like a, a first height of say 0.1 or something like that. Maybe give it 10 layers, um, depending on what plus you wanna hit. In this particular case, we'll just leave it for an aspect ratio, leave it to just actually two layers. And we're gonna select the, um, just the front wing, hit create. Uh, we're just going to be using the polyhex core. We'll just merge the cell zones afterwards and pretty much hit mesh. Awesome. All right. Um, so now that we've got the mesh that's created, uh, we can right click and draw our boundaries and we can actually have a look at what the mesh is looking like. So again, we can just insert our, insert our clipping plane, sorry. Um, just limit by Z and we can kind of move in. We can show the cut edges and start to see what the actual mesh looks like. So this is a really fine mesh. I think I overdid it there, but that's fine. Um, you know, you can see how fine everything is. Um, you know, this transition might not be as appropriate. So you might have something that's a little bit less, maybe one or two more components. Um, we can also have a look at, you know, what's happening around here. So we can zoom in. We can see we've got polys, we've got multiple edges, components around there. If we see this, we should also be able to see the, the boundary layer around there as well. So we, see, we can see that we've got, we've got a couple of cells. In reality, we probably want more depending on the Y plus that you guys are running, but you guys can uh, make that decision yourself. All right, um, again, right clicking on this, we can have a look at what the summary is. So we can have a look at the, um, um, well, normally what I do is, Auto node move. Um, I don't actually go in and, and actually figure out exactly where the components are. I'll just say, you know, let's say point um, eight nine, um, have it on iterations there, and hit apply, and it'll go through the process of automatically moving it. Um, in reality, I normally do it by script because it's actually a lot easier. So in this particular case, it's you know mesh modify. It's doing the auto node move on everything at a skewness of like point nine nine. Um, this 50 is relating to the max item per node, the dihedral angle. And in this particular case, instead of just one iteration, it's actually doing 10. So it's, it's got more options when it comes to actually improving the, um, the, the node movement. Does it not? Oh, see, it's no cell over the criteria. So just go 0 0.8 and then go skew. There we go. And so now if you click on the screen and if you just press the up key, and so that was the other day, Harry, you were having a problem with um, like elements that were skewed beyond 1.5 or like beyond one. That's always going to be a region where you have like a closed gap and you won't necessarily be able to find that by just zooming around the, um, the geometry. So if you do it this way, you can press up, up, up until you've got enough context to see where those elements are. You can go back and change it in the geometry and come back. Um, so I've got the, uh, I've done the auto node move. So again, I'd normally use a script that automatically goes through that whole process as well. Um, and then we'd go hit prepare to solve. And what it's going to do, is going to get rid of all this other crap pretty much. So all the geometry files and the mesh files that we really didn't use. Um, then what we're going to do um, is if I right click on this, so if I use the selection filter here, right click on this, you'll see that it's got domain X min. And if I hit this button here, it's actually gonna rename everything for me. So I'm gonna call this inlet and give it a boundary condition of velocity inlet. And I'm gonna do the same for this one here. So outlet and pressure outlet, cool. So all these other things will pretty much be defaulted to, to walls, which is fine. Um, and now the other thing that I'm gonna do is the mesh, uh, as I'm gonna scale it down. So if I go mesh manage, I can go to my scale function hit this one, and I'm gonna scale it down in 0.001 in, uh, in all three components. Press apply. Right, again, you'll see the scale zero to a thousand. If I rescale this and zoom in, so again, scale down. We can see now it's in, uh, it's in meters pretty much, so just standard SI units. So now that that's done, um, I'll normally just go switch to solution and it's gonna take pretty much all the data and switch it over to the solution. So again, on the script, um, we've created the mesh, changed the mesh types, we've 
um, created the auto node move, so we fixed up any volume grids. Again, after this, if there are still some really bad elements, it probably means that there is something in the geometry that does need to get fixed up. So um, understand that and fix it up in the geometry. Um, we write the mesh out for debugging, we scale it down, we prepare the solve, which gets rid of all the geometry objects, and then we switch over to the solution side of things. And we've got the solution here. So this is the solver, just hit the display button, and we can have a look at everything. So let's do its thing. Cool. Um, so I think in this particular case, it's a pretty big grid. I'm not going to figure out how big the grid size is. Uh, but normally I'll go through the process. So I'll just use the tree, by the way, on the left-hand side. That's just a personal thing. I know Errol likes the, like the bar at the top. Again, to each their own. Um, K Omega SST with curvature correction, right? Um, and then we'll go to our boundary conditions and I, I normally like to group them by the zone type. So we can see we've got an inlet coming in here, which is that red component that you can see in the middle. Uh, we'll just give it a 10 minutes per second. We've got an internal, which is just everything inside. We've got our outlet, which is a zero pressure gauge, which is exactly what we expected. Uh, and then we've got our walls as well. So if I click on this, we can see it's highlighted the wall minimum. So what I'd like to do is actually uh, rename that. So I can rename that here if I want to. I'm going to call it ground. Um, moving wall coming in at 10 meters per second as well in the positive x direction and uh, the domain y max um, is going to be a free slip wall as well as so one of the other things I can do um, so I've given the ground that and the Y max is a free ship wall. I can copy that from um, the Y max to the these ones here. So it'll automatically copy the batching condition. So you don't, if you've got multiple ones, it just makes it a little bit easier, right? And then the other thing is the wheel. So I don't know what the actual coordinate system of the wheels are in this particular case, um, but what I would do is, Bigger. Right, so just go moving wheels again. Um, just re re relative, rotational, I think it's something normally like 50. Give the axis coordinate conditions. Um, so it might be something like 0 0.1 or something like that. And the definition as well. So using the right hand rule will be in the Z direction. Right, that's okay. On the method side of things, so we're just going to switch over to the coupled solver and not the simple solver. Um, we've got kind of first order, second order. Um, pressure and momentum and for increased accuracy you might want to increase the turbulent kinetic energy and the specific dissipation rate not the biggest issue at the moment though i normally switch on the pseudo transient solver because i found that it helps with um, turbulent flow and i'll have some sort of report definition as well so i'll most likely put something like uh, lift forces on the on the front wing um, right so again nothing special so in the positive y direction, we can go, I normally just leave it as the uh, the force, right? Um, and then go over to the calc and just go like say 200 iterations and then run through it. And that's pretty much it.